All right, guys. You know, we've, we've been reacting to Philip DeFranco's new segments quite often. Like, past four days or something. Uh, we're gonna do it again. Because why not? Why not? Why not? Let's check it out, guys. We won't react to tomorrow's just because I don't want to react to every single video of his. Let's, without further ado, let's check it out, guys. Today, we're talking about how this Joe Jonas Sophie Turner divorce is more. Who's Joe Jonas? Who's Sophie Turner? What's up, Watson? Morphed into a straight up smear campaign. We've got riptide rescues, people flashing other people from their apartments, others smearing planes. What the heck? Did I hear that right? And diarrhea. Creator leagues now falling apart after that messy Mr. Beast launch scandal. Prisoners are revolting. Creator League, bro. Creator soccer games, man. Okay, okay. Let's see, let's see my dog in the background. Hey, Amber. Thing. Alabama won't stop gerrymandering and Wisconsin politicians are once again trying to undo the will of the people. We're going to talk about all that and so much more on today's brand new Philip DeFranco show. So buckle up, make sure you're subscribed, and let's just jump into it. Starting with, well, this is a nightmare. A flight from Atlanta. Nice. I don't remember him having the, the, the turn on notifications thing there. Anna to Barcelona was forced to turn around two hours into the journey because we've had a passenger who had diarrhea all the way through the airplane. You had passengers saying it dribbled. Oh my gosh. Pulled down the aisle. I was actually going to uh, talk about this, but I didn't know if it was going to be advertiser friendly or anything, bro. And it's kind of gross. They tried to cover up the smell with vanilla, but it just smelled like vanilla diarrhea. Well, a lot of people. Gross, man. How's that even happen? People have been like, wow, that would have just been a nightmare to be on that, to see that happen. I personally feel so bad for the diarrhea passenger. And not only did this happen, did you cover a plane in... Yo, he blurted it out. Diarrhea. You then had to sit in it for two hours. And I can't even imagine the feeling of all those eyes on you. Like, people just going like, you ruined my vacation with... Oh my gosh, bro. Your asshole. And then because everything and everyone are connected at all the time and people have phones in their pocket... This becomes national news. Top trending front page. So many, so many plane events happening. We we had the airplane lady. Now we got the diarrhea events, bro. What is going on, man? Page shit. Yeah, it just sounds shitty for everyone involved. And then in downtown Chicago, reportedly an old He's man right. is walking around his apartment naked every day and touching himself while looking at the women in the building across from him. What the heck? <laughs> But the police are saying that is his right and that he's not breaking the law. In places like Chicago and New York, it's not what? uncommon for residents to be able to see. Am I live on YouTube? No, I don't go live on YouTube no more. Or at least for now. Soon I will. Hopefully uh, in a, a, little bit over in a, uh, a little bit over a month and I'll go live on YouTube. Either high-rise neighbors. And so most just put up curtains to avoid the awkward eye contact. But these women in Chicago's Streeterville neighborhood say this man across the street is naked in his own apartment 24-7 and that for 10 to 15 minutes a day, he touches himself in front of the window. With one <laughs> Guys, they're like living permanently with this guy across the street, man. And he's naked touching himself. Well, wow. woman even keeping a log of every time the man has been naked with at least 70 such instances in only 10 months. With the women... Dang, bro. I thought he... 70 in 10 months? I thought he was naked 24-7, guys. Even putting up signs in their windows asking him to stop, and he didn't, so they call the police several times now. And the police report saying the old man actually just waves to them. Uh, we're, we're just uh, trying out Twitch right now. Uh, when they see him, and once he actually held up a sign saying, come over. But ultimately, the police saying they can't do anything because he's in the privacy of his own home. And so instead, one of the ladies took matters into her own hands and confronted the old man in the lobby of his apartment. With him then agreeing to stop, but then not long after, he went back to flashing Chicago. And so if the women's... Oh my gosh. He's like, yeah, I'll stop, bro. And then in his mind, he's like, yeah, I'm not going to stop. It's my right. Saying this feels like sexual harassment, but when WGN confronted the old man, he just said, put up some curtains. But with that said, what are your thoughts here? And then in big celebrity social media and drama news, Joe Jonas is facing a ton of backlash. And that's why I have like a blanket over my window, guys. Just, but this guy, this guy is wild. Like, it's kind of gross. He should put up curtains. That's right now. And it's all based on this absolute mess of news and narrative. Who's Joe Jonas, dog? It's coming out of his split with Sophie Turner. Because there have been rumors for a few days, but the news finally broke yesterday that they are officially divorcing. You know, usually we don't cover celebrity divorces. Like, I don't really care. But there's been a ton of conversation around the specifics here that I do think that we need to talk about. Because we had TMZ saying that, well, Joe is... Yeah, we don't, celebrity divorces, first of all, I don't even know who they are, so why should I? Seeking joint custody, the couple's Here two children well. are residing with him right now, and they have been for a while. And reportedly, as far as why Joe filed for divorce, one source... 
Chris reportedly told them, she likes to party, he likes to stay at home. They have very different lifestyles. I'm also a stay at home dude, guys, not gonna lie, I'm a stay at home and stream kind of dude. But, you know, yeah, yeah, guys, like, this is my... My, my, my preference. And so with that and a number of the reports, you have a lot of people slamming this media narrative, with many thinking this is a blatant PR attempt to disparage Sophie and make her look like the bad parent amid the divorce. With people All right, CBA, we're going to go to the next story. It's like this creator, then, Mr. Beast, this creator league thing is falling apart. So creator league scandal just got a lot messier. We talked about the backlash and controversy earlier this week with a big esports tournament being put on by eFuse. Mr. Beast announcing it to sixty plus million people and counting in one of his videos, even though he wasn't actually part of the tournament. I know, right? Look at all those big names on that freaking list right there, man. Though there were plenty of other big names involved, including I Show Speed, Bella Porch, Vin like Bella, one of the biggest freaking TikTokers in the freaking platform, man. The hacker, C Dog, VA, and OTK. In a with Creator League, people could buy Creator League community passes to interact with the tournament and join their favorite streamers' team. But then the backlash was incredibly swift when it got reported that these passes were actually secretly NFTs, which then resulted. What? That in many creators saying they had no clue NFTs or blockchain tech was involved in this. So you saw C Dog VA dropping out, OTK also saying they had to look into the matter once the end. Dang, bro. NFT news broke. You also saw Mr. Beast getting some heat, people saying he was misleadingly promoting. All right, guys, I think we already talked or like uh, I read about it, but I'll let it play for a little bit longer. NFTs. But the first big update here is that eFuse has since released a statement clarifying that yes, there is blockchain tech involved, but no, these passes are not NFTs. Saying near blockchain is being used to validate data and log information relating to the community. They're coming out and then denying it, guys. What? Community passes. All passes are purchased in USD and therefore no cryptocurrency is being purchased. Addition yeah, that, that's what I was saying when I first heard about it. I was like, yo. NFTs are kind of a thing of the past almost, bro. Additionally, the company states the Creator League community passes are not considered NFTs nor a token launch because they had no transfer utility, which means there is no ability to resell. And Sean Pavel, the vice president of engineering for eViews, also saying, we apologize for not intentionally disclosing the blockchain's limited use, but emphasizing there once again that the passes were not NFTs. So notably, mm. this wasn't the only big issue happening behind the scenes over at eViews, because yesterday you also had tons of employees saying they had been let go by the company, and the company even confirming to Dexerto that it had laid off 30... Dexerto, that's how you pronounce it, guys. We've been reacting to a lot of stuff from this uh, new company percent of its workforce across several departments Dexerto. and all that coming with the news that creator league has now been postponed as efuse deals with some internal restructuring with ceo gg the path toward innovation is winding we're prepared right. to keep up to wait next to one see. a 14 year old uh one shit challenge we actually already reacted to that so we'll skip to the next one it should be on my channel if you want to hear me talk about it atlantic ocean right and that's because remnants of hurricanes franklin veteran says man from Riptide. Okay, okay. And Idalia churned up especially powerful riptides that have been sucking people out to sea. And in fact, just over the holiday weekend, 14 people died in swimming and boating accidents, partly for that reason. And while luckily, many rescue efforts have brought people back in safely to shore, others have ended in tragedy. Like in New Jersey, lifeguards and beachgoers formed a human chain to try and save a swimmer caught in a riptide, but the person still drowned. Hey, no, that's pretty scary, man. And for Gabe McCabe, a man that was dragged out by... Guys, I was, uh, I actually almost... Uh, passed away in the ocean as well, bro. I, I was trying to swim to safety, man. My dad had to come and save me, bro. A riptide off Long Beach Island on Sunday. He thought he was going to die too with him telling ABC. I kept being pulled down and down and down. But then, lucky for him, Stephen Hauser, a teacher, surfer, and ex-Marine, saw him struggling to fight the current from atop his boogie board a distance away. And so Steve paddles over like an absolute bamf and saves this man's life. There you go. And beaches are freaking dangerous, bro. Right behind you, we're gonna ride this together. All right, good. Might as well make fun of With the men making it back to shore, Gabe thanking him profusely and Steve. Guys, I don't think I want to go out to the beach again unless I have like a boogie board or something ever, bro. And probably a life jacket, man. Later saying. There was no way in heck I was letting him go. Thank God I got to him at, you know, the right time because... I don't think he had much longer. Also, since we're on this topic, in case any of you actually find yourself stuck in a riptide, it's going to be easier to say than do. The worst thing that you can do is panic and try and swim towards shore. That current will pull you out faster than you can swim. Instead, it's recommended you swim parallel to the shore or just wait it out until you naturally float out of the riptide. So boom, now you know, and statistically, one to three of you will. Guys, that's how I panicked as well. I was trying to panic swim to shore, bro. Will now be saved from. I don't even know what a riptide is that much. Let's go to the next story. 
We'll, we'll, we'll look at a little bit at the sponsor because they always got some new sponsors. Because that's not wishful thinking. That's exactly what the sponsor of today's show, Cook Unity, does. Cook Unity is the first chef to you meal delivery service made up of a group of diversely talented chefs who believe that great food should be for everyone. I'm talking meals you'd find in restaurants delivered to you fully cooked. What? Cooked, and you just heat them up. Like, oh my gosh, the grilled Asian hanger steak was so tender and flavorful, not to mention how great the charred broccoli he was like hats off to chefs all right sponsored by a chef company i mean we've seen it before but apparently it's by chefs pretty cool pretty cool next one prison but reportedly on sunday morning over 100 inmates bro i was in jail as well man and thankfully they had the air conditioning air on because it was also summer bro i was in there for six months man i was down bad Fused to return to their cells from the area where they make phone calls and take showers, and it caused the facility to go on lockdown. And that's because the heat has gotten just so intolerable that they couldn't survive it anymore, with one of them explaining. It got to a point now where we decided to take a piece of pro stand and take a stand for our rights and say, listen, we ain't taking... I do, I do advocate for better prison conditions, but it's also prison. However, you know, using a phone, I think, should be allowed. No more. And, you know, adequate food, better food... But it shouldn't be like a vacation that much, guys. Where the prison sits about 25 miles east of Minneapolis, which was put under a heat advisory for temperatures nearing 100 degrees. And a key thing, Stillwater is one of nine prisons in Minnesota that still lack. And, and yeah, freaking air conditioning is definitely recommended. Like, it should be a necessity, bro. Come on, facility now. Come on now, air conditioning. Air conditioning. And while these inmates have been dealing with the heat all summer, the past several days were especially bad because the prison is already short 50 officers in. Dang, bro. I mean, it's, 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 we're coming to the end of summer. We got like 10 days. Even more left for the holiday weekend. So to make up for that staffing shortage, inmates were then forced to stay in their cells for even longer periods without AC. And then to make the situation... Yikes, man. Screw jail. Screw prison. Do not have to go there, guys. It's not no fun. Even worse, they claim that the drinking water isn't clean. So you have a spokesperson for them saying yesterday... The way that the guys um have water is they take the ice from the ice machine and they take a sock and put it over a cup and they filter the ice water to try to collect some of the contaminations that oh that's so gross man i, I have seen some tiktoks of a prison when I, I don't see them that much no more but yeah i keep seeing prison tiktoks and they're used to where and there were some harsh living conditions there man do not go to prison guys do not go to jail that's running through the pipes this building here is 109 years old. We have officials saying the protest was resolved peacefully later that day and no injuries were reported. But as we've talked about recently on this show, prisons across the country are basically baking their inmates in triple digit temperatures. And climate change has just been making it worse every year. Right by one count, 44 states do not have air conditioning in all their prisons and 10 of them are in the South. And so it's very likely partial air conditioning man well wow. we're gonna see more of these protests coming not just from advocates on the outside but inmates but yeah when i was in jail it was a uh, pretty cool down though i'm not gonna lie they had a they had adequate cooling inside as well and then the war against airbnb in new york city is officially underway and that's because after city residents begged for years new york city has officially started cracking down on short-term rentals with as of yesterday a new set of regulations called local law 18 going into effect and that heavily beefing up the city's existing rules with one they're, okay, short-term rentals, guys. I don't even know what that is. One of the biggest changes being requiring short-term landlords to register with the city. As a city official saying, registration creates a clear path for hosts who follow the city's long-standing laws and protect travelers from illegal and unsafe accommodations while ending the proliferation of illegal short-term rentals. Other rules require that legal short-term rentals cannot host more than two people and that the host has to live inside the unit as well and be present. Okay, we're going to skip to the next one. I don't, I don't know what it is. Don't know. It's just like, you know, fighting back against a giga corporation that just popped up out of nowhere in the past, like, five years. Airbnb. Next one, guys. Over this insanely ridiculous ongoing battle over Alabama's congressional map, which really, at this point, should not still be ongoing. But as we've talked about before, the state was ordered to throw out and redraw its map after a federal court found that it discriminated against black voters, which notably was a decision that even the conservative majority on the Supreme Court upheld. And this after the GOP had drawn its congressional map, so just one of the state's seven districts had a black majority, despite the fact that nearly one in three voters in the state are black. And under the ruling, the GOP-controlled state legislature was directed to redraw the map, so at least two districts had a majority of black voters, or, quote, close to it. 
Okay. Like they were essentially saying, just please fucking do the bare minimum. But even that was too much for these fuckers in their state legislature, who forced through a map in July that increased the percentage of black voters in one congressional district from around 30% to almost 40%. You know how like when you go to dinner and you split the $100 bill with a friend and they're like, you know, I want to pay close to a majority and then they pay $39. And you're like, that's closer to a third than half. And so unsurprisingly, this didn't fly. With a panel of three federal judges striking down this new map and- Guys, I, I don't quite understand this story. Sorry, I'm not following along the best. I'm Actually trying to. tearing the Republican legislature a new asshole, writing in their decision. We are deeply troubled <laughs> that the state enacts- The way he said that right there though. <laughs> the map that the state readily admits does not provide the remedy we said federal law requires. And going on to accuse officials of failing to even nurture the ambition to provide the required remedy. And adding, we are not aware of any other case in which a state legislature faced with a federal court order declaring that its electoral plan unlawfully dilutes minority votes and requiring a plan that provides an additional opportunity district responded with a plan that the state concedes does not provide that district. And very, very notably here, the fact- Guys, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not following along on this one. Let's go to the last one, or second to last one. I mean- Fucking incredibly bogus. This judge has not even made a single ruling yet. Right back in April. Wisconsin GOP threatens to impeach new liberal state Supreme Court justice. Why, though? Roberta Sawitz won an insanely consequential and closely watched election that both Democrats and Republicans spent millions and millions of dollars on, making it the most expensive state judicial election ever. And that's because a ton was on the line, right? Whoever won that election would determine the ideological makeup of the state Supreme Court, meaning that voters were given the ability to flip the court's conservative majority to a why, why are they trying to impeach her, bro? Wisconsin? Wisconsin, what are you doing, Wisconsin? Liberal majority for the first time in 15 years. And not only did they choose to do that, they did it by a huge margin with Protosewitz winning by 11%. Which Dang, bro. I feel like I'm taking an L here. In such a closely divided state is basically a landslide. But just a month after Protosewitz was sworn into office, Republicans are trying to overturn the will of the people. With Republicans specifically taking issue with comments Protosewitz made during her campaign about the state's electoral map, which she called rigged. And I mean, let's just call it straight. She's not wrong there. Wisconsin's electoral map is widely considered some of the most gerrymandered in America, period. I mean, we're talking about maps that have effectively locked in permanent Republican majorities. I mean, just look at the 2018 election. That year, Democrats won every single statewide race. Uh, political stuff, bro. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just CBA. A uh, CBA next to the one. Your thoughts about yesterday's show, okay. And the Eras Tour movie sounds like an actual nightmare. And saying we had to stop doing movie marathons at our cinema because people would take it too far, even bringing things like fireworks and setting them off. And as a movie theater what the heck? manager, I'm wary about the Taylor Swift Eras Tour. Her fans were already out of pocket when the tickets went to sale. And some of the rude and pretentious phone calls we got were already a turn off. I'm not a T-Swift fan, but my GM and a fellow manager are, and even they are wary about it. And saying the BTS Army literal teenagers weren't as crazy as some of these Swifties are. October is going to be a month from hell. And finally from this batch, someone saying they're horse- Swift these guys. <laughs> and these workers are going to be fucked over by people screaming, dancing, and losing their shit. Other patrons in theaters will complain. Some also. Dude, bro. Uh, that's scary, man. That's scary. It's literally like flash mobs of fans or something close to it. So referencing the BTS movie, saying as a BTS army, when BTS released their concert at the movies, you had people who treated it as a concert, and saying the theaters should make sure that all of these individual theaters are next to one another. And several people making predictions, like I give the Eras movie 24 to 48 hours before every theater just closes it down and refuses to show it. It should really be streaming only. But there, I will say I very much disagree, at least on the uh, 24 to 48 hours part. No theater in their right mind is going to drop this movie. It is expected to bring in a crazy amount of money. And like many things in America and in this world, money- Wait, she has a movie? It trumps everything. I mean, we've even seen movies change their release date because Taylor announced her movie. But that's where I'm going to leave that. Bro, Taylor says Swift has a movie. What is it even going to be? I don't think she's an actor, bro. Is it just like a live performance? How's that going to do super good, guys? I mean, I guess the Swifties will carry it. Also, remember, any of the comments you leave on any of the stories that matter to you today might end up in this segment tomorrow. But that is where today's dive into the news is going to end. For more news you need to know, I got you all right guys like comment subscribe check out the original video in the description from phila DeFranco. i pray that the diary of plain person remains personal uh, permanently anonymous at all costs same here same here nobody go and find it who that is someone who has crohn's disease and has an accident in public no sense. my heart breaks out to people who had diarrhea on the plane the person yeah. Pretty sad. I mean, guys, it, I saw the picture. It was going down the hallway, man. It was really gross. I, I didn't even want to feature the picture on YouTube. I was like, yo, I'm not even going to like react to it on, on YouTube because it's, it's, you know, that, 
it's filled the Franco thought the same way he actually um, censored it. All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe, check out the original creator in this Christian. See you guys next one. Um, on to 5,000 subscribers. We're 500 subs away, but we'll get there hopefully soon. And uh, yeah, good video today. I mean, guys, if you want to like watch any of the stories that he talked to, he talked about just. Go ahead and uh, click the video in this description because I, I know I, I scrolled through all uh, a few of it. It's just, you know, he does make his new segments pretty long and I don't want to watch the whole thing. But I do like at least looking at the, you know, he puts a, the, the chapters like, you know, the, the, the chapters in his videos, which is amazingly good. Because I wouldn't watch the videos if he didn't have chapters. And literally, if he doesn't put the chapters because occasionally he doesn't. I will actually just not watch a video occasionally because I don't even know what I'm looking at like if without the chapters, bro. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching.